Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm uh, Frédéric Van Hout. I'm the uh, CEO of Eventis Media Group and the founder of the World for Travel. Uh, we, we are waiting for His Excellency, uh, Mr. Minister um, Barlett, Minister of Tourism of Jamaica, but it seems that there is some political, uh, political uh, tension or issues or problems in this country this morning. So he is, uh, he is running to, to join us. But I want to, can, can you please turn off the, the music? Um, I want, however, to uh, welcome His Excellency, uh, Mr. Talebrify, the former Secretary General of the UN WTO and also the co-chairman of the Residence Council. Merci, Monsieur, to be here. And uh, Anne-Louis Charojo, President of the ETC, joining us in a perfect timing, as usual. I've been working in the travel industry for 30 years. Uh, I launched the first uh, travel agency in France and in seven countries in Europe. I founded uh, Eventis Media Group, the leading travel media uh, company in France and for the French-speaking countries. We work with my group with the uh, leisure, tech, mice, and corporate uh, travel markets. And I have observed the evolution of the travel industry, and I know the challenges and issues. I also know what tourism brings to the world. I want to defend peace, the rapprochement of peoples, the understanding of others. I also want to respect the environment and the populations. I do not want Greta Thunberg, who makes good observations that brings balancers, to be the only voice of our uh, transformation. By uh, bringing uh, together tourism professionals who know the industry better than anyone else, and NGOs, young people, institutions, experts, and representatives of the population, we should find the way for tomorrow's tourism. Without the kind and legitimate welcome of Portugal, which is an example of this uh, new tourism, we would have wasted a lot of time in bringing all these people and yourself together here. I asked uh, Christian Delon to be our Secretary General. He has worked for the air transportation industry, technology, and institution. He is elected in his region, shares my ideas, and has accepted to be the voice of this indispensable evolution of our sector. And I thank him and hand him over to Christian. Thank you, uh, Frederic, and uh, welcome you all. Uh, obrigada, Frederic. Bem-vindos todos e todas. Estamos aqui para trabalhar, não, não, não só para conversar. Uh, e agora, de facto, isto está a acontecer porque tivemos que enfrentar a Covid e conseguimos fazê-lo de forma que conseguimos estar aqui nesta universidade muito inspiradora e esta situação da Covid, claro que é um problema, é um problema importante, mas acelerou todas as mutações que estavam em curso e todas as crises que tivemos que enfrentar antes dela. Uh, e é nisto que pensamos, ou que pensamos, quando uh, pensamos também os, os conteúdos e a agenda deste evento. Uma forma de ultrapassarmos esta pandemia, esta crise, e pensarmos na transformação desta indústria é uh, pensar também a reorganização de todas as partes interessadas. Uh, And this is a major thing to think that every other stakeholders of the uh, uh, tourism and travel industry have to work together. Millenniums, yes, Greta Thunberg is demanding, but millenniums, there are millenniums there are that are acting themselves. For instance, they are just acting by choosing their own way of traveling. And at 11 o'clock, there will be a, the biker, uh, Isor, she's arriving from a 1,500 uh, 1, uh, ride, bike ride by herself just to meet the people. And she managed to do it because now it's feasible. Well, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it wasn't. 
And this action, we have to take action because all the demands is changing. For instance, it is time to action because, for instance, 60 Three percent of travelers in the UK, for instance, and US have never been offered a carbon offset scheme on a flight. 66, uh, three, three, uh, 30, 30, 36 of, of the travelers would be willing to pay to offset the carbon footprint of their flight, but they don't find only they don't find the the the, the, the way to do it. And travel and tourism capital investment represents only 17% of travel and tourism contribution to GDP. And this is what Bank uh, uh, said. So what's the purpose? It's to change these figures. We have to move forward. We have to move forward for sustainability. Uh, what will travel is the think tank event that will occur annually uh, to push the transformation and watch the progress achieved. No useless blaming chain that frees the actions. We want to create a method. And this first edition is to gather all the forces, give a starting point from where we are with a survey provided by Hollywood Women we are going to display in, uh, uh, in, in half an hour, and uh, with also a, a review of all the global white papers uh, from any of the organizations and you'll show that our, of course, a lot of things that have already been said, but done, it's not sure. The delegates are taking guidelines to move forward beyond call to action. Transgression, transgression progress, and steadiness are the DNA of a world of travel. We want to create confidence in the sustainable transformation of travel and tourism. What discussions will discover, discover it in the, in, the in, in the agenda, of course, but I want to stress some of them. Cross-sector collaboration, important, most important. A new deal with new leadership demands. That's also the leadership is something that is very, very important. Maybe sometimes lack of leadership explains most of the problems we have to face. A new governance for safe and sustainable travel this is important also to change the governance. And sustainable tourism means industry reorganization to ensure the travel industry is connected with the local communities. We are going to see that local communities have to be taken into account more and more in the future. Long-term investment and payback, it means a new model and new risks certainly. Of course, unavoidable zero carbon target. And we have to think about the technology that can help to achieve all these uh, issues. And we have a better than good enough technology. Who is attending? Four groups of organizations. The national, regional, local governments, and their international organizations, just like UNWTO, ETC Next Tour, Companies and their organizations, WTTC, ECTA, PATA, ATA, LATA, NGOs, USAID, Travelist, Care International, How Many Elephants and others, academics and experts, all together. 20 ministers and head of states, 140 speakers, 80 in person, 80 medias, you are here and our medias in vo in, uh, that uh, is following this press conference uh, virtually and I want just to welcome them wherever they are, of course, and at what time they are, because all of them are co covering the whole world. We, at, we are just waiting for 5,000 virtual delegates that, that represent 88 countries. So this is a huge event and we want, of course, we expect to align all types of stakeholders, to uh, get from the 30 sessions, uh, to have for the first session the possibility to resume the priorities, and we benefit afterwards, uh, they benefit afterwards of follow up by during 12 months up to the next edition of, uh, edition of World for Travel in uh, 2022. And after the forum, all the contents, experiences, knowledges, propositions are to be resumed and published to be shared with you medias 
with the industry and the organizations and even with other events we are going to participate. So it is a really a huge and very important, and I will, and uh, I forgot one thing, we had also uh, programs for a legacy to the local, com uh, to the local uh, communities. We are going to plant 135 trees just nearby, not in the countryside, inside the city. Because we have really to consider that the impact has to be granted to the one who are uh, welcoming uh, the people and the tourists. It's just a, a, a sign uh, that, we would, uh, the, that we wanted to, uh, to, to show. And there are another legacy with uh, how many elephants, because we wanted also to stress that we must uh, find a way of uh, uh, fighting against uh, for the, uh, or not fighting, or for preserving wildlife wherever it, I it is, and uh, you are going to have with you a very, a very interesting uh, session. Here we are, and uh, I think that we have now to move forward together. This is the first, uh, f the first edition, so f forgive us, there will be some uh, missing, but anyway, uh, I think that all the uh, participants, all the speakers, all the moderators are really wanted to show that something is new and they are, uh, fully understand that we have to move forward and they are going to give insight how to do it. But because they consider, of course, that I the urgency is now real, but the how is not so uh, real, uh, uh, and we don't show that our industry is moving. We are a bit late. We know that, and now we have to be not to be late and to to be on time. Uh, the other sectors are not doing the same way. They are moving, and we must move at the same time. Thank you. Then. Uh, Mr. Bartlett or, me or Rifai, can Rifai Taleb can maybe... Mr. Bartlett, you, are, you have the stage. Welcome, Welcome you. Uh, fortunately, you, you, arrived, you succeeded in that joining us. No, it's okay. You have not to put it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Thank you, Mr. My apologies for being late. I had a just a little under two hours of flying to get here. And it has been uh, a little uh, testy. But here we are, and thank you so much for your patience and your kind indulgences. And yes, indeed, we are at a very critical crossroads in our history as a human family, and particularly for the very important industry that we represent, tourism. Uh, tourism, indeed, has had its um, appreciation of insecurities, uncertainties, disruptions um, over the last 50 years or more. In fact, we have undergone uh, nearly four critical global disruptions that have appended activities and have changed uh, the way in which travel and tourism has happened. Uh, some of which you're very familiar. There's 9-11 that I know you recall. There's SARS, of course, that we've talked about. And then there are numerous other uh, uh, climatic events that have taken place in diverse places. And of course, there's the economic meltdown of 2008 leading on, and now the pandemic, which is the worst a global disruption that the human family has faced in the last 100 or more years. Uh, arguably, it's existential. Arguably, it's perhaps uh, a very uh, species-changing potential global disruption, a disruption which Im uh, impacted every country simultaneously. And that's what made it so very different and unique in that previously we've seen where disruptions have happened in continents or in regions, but this one, every single country simultaneously. 
Uh, tourism, of course, has grown over the last uh, 50 years by more than 6%, and in the process has generated jobs very close to 440 million people and has provided a GDP contribution of some 11%, uh, $7.8 trillion of expenditure in a given year uh, of 2019. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and uh, many countries, numerous countries, over 70 countries of the world have become uh, significantly dependent on tourism for their well-being, uh, some up to 15-20% uh, of their GDP uh, on average. And then in smaller countries that are highly tourism dependent, such as mine and those of us in the Caribbean and in the Maldives uh, and the Indian Ocean countries, we've had uh, tourism dependence of up to 95% of GDP generating jobs of well over 50% and providing foreign exchange of over 60% uh, of the requirements and needs of the country. So the impact of this pandemic has been devastating on those countries. Uh, it indeed, um, the prospects even of those countries recovering uh, in short order has been very dismal indeed. So the very nature of that level of disruption calls for as fast a recovery as is possible. The issue is how do we make that recovery happen and how do we enable uh, a, a, a social component of that recovery, which is so critical, a, a, a new word really for many, but a word that has been around forever called equity. How do we ensure that there's recovery with equity? And some of the factors that have influenced this are the clinical and medical arrangements that have been, and scientific arrangements that are in place to help us to manage this pandemic. Uh, for example, the question of vaccination and vaccines is a major issue in this recovery program. And the access to vaccines uh, has been a major discussion across the world. The, the level of equity that exists there where less than 10% of the countries of the world have cornered more than 80% of that precious fluid that exists, that life-saving fluid, uh, enabling this recovery process to be so staggered. Uh, there are countries that have had up to three applications of the vaccine, while 80% of the world is still to complete the first dose. So we have to discuss those uh, very seriously, and the world has to respond to those. Uh, then we have to look at the issue of uh, communication and how communication in its new dimensions based on this fourth revolution and the capacity of all of us now to be equal contributors in that field. Uh, with a single device that we now have in our hands, uh, we can change the course of the world. In the past, communication was more centered within the middle. It was a few of us who had control of information, data. Today, communication is gone in the peripheries. Everybody now has the same capacity, as it were, to transmit content and to influence the way in which we live and operate. And that has caused a level also of transparency, which is frightening. Because it now means that nothing is more a secret anymore, and nobody has proprietary control over any area and that we also are bombarded with information, information. There's a sort of information flow that is almost disruptive. And this process of understanding how to respond, for example, to the vaccine application, is a case in point. It has generated a level of hesitancy that is frightening in terms of this recovery program. So in my country, for example, there's perhaps a 35% hesitancy now, where we are trying to get the entire country vaccinated. We're trying to build um, a global uh, standard, a, a global platform for action where there is harmony and there is alignment of ideas uh, and agreement as to a formula that could be used everywhere. But that formula is under pressure because of the uh, level of information flow and how that flow has been affecting the way 
people have acted uniformly. And um, so we are seeing that tourism, and I want to make this point this morning very importantly as we meet in this fashion to think through how together we could make this great industry recover faster and provide more of the benefits to people that it is so capable of doing. That we have to make our voices heard as a tourism family. And we need a mechanism that is going to not just be credible, but be a, a part of the advocacy, the strong advocacy for greater understanding between peoples as to what this vaccine means and how important it is for all of us to have it as a protection and as a critical medical instrument, if you will, for recovery. And we have to deal also with the issue of uh, equity. So the two big items for recovery, as I see them, and that we want to take from this, is the need for greater equity and for the reduction of hesitancy. Vaccine equity and vaccine hesitancy, the two factors that will influence importantly the recovery program for tourism across the world. I thank you. Thank you, Minister uh, Taleb. Uh, your co-chair of the, uh, you both are co-chair of the Residence Council. So we want to know why you are working with us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope this is open. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Let me say on the behalf of the Resilience Council, which I have the honor of sharing with Minister Bartlett here, we're very happy to be here as co-organizers of this meeting. I'd like to thank uh, the French, our French friends, for uh, for being the main organizer. I also want to thank the government of Portugal for bringing us here. Without them, we would not have been here. Definitely, the organization of this meeting is incredibly, incredibly efficient, as you can see. So thank you, everybody, for being here. On the behalf of the Resilience Council, which I have the honor to co-chair with President Bartlett, I also have the honor of chairing the Resilience Center, which is based in Jamaica, with President Minister Bartlett. Minister Bartlett is a very, very envisioned and open person. Now, I want to start by saying that four years ago, I had an interview with a Portuguese newspaper out of all people. They asked me at the time, what do I think would happen to, to tourism? At the time, Trump was just elected. Brexit was on the, on the, on the, on the verge and terrorism was threatening everybody. I said at the time, I remember, I said tourism will be affected negatively in different degrees, but it will come back to where it was. And it did come back within less than, less than a year. Today, I cannot say this. Today, we will not go back to where we were. We will leap forward into a better future, without doubt. I'm very optimistic about COVID. I think COVID has uncovered much of our weaknesses. You can't have every government work on its own. Now, this is in the hands of governments now. Minister Bartlett knows this. Governments have to work together. We cannot allow this thing to be in the hands of each and every government individually. You know, every government now is trying its best to protect its people. It's understandable because life is the most important thing in life. But to, 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 to so solve this dilemma of life and livelihood, we must work together as government. The trick is not to do a good job on your own. The trick is how to work together with others because tourism connects people and places. We cannot have one country doing, we cannot have the multilateral system operating the way it's op operating now. Look at the European Union. We have a country that's insisting on, on uh, quarantine when you arrive. Another country that's saying if a vaccination passport is enough. A third country that says 72 hours testing, uh, test before you enter is enough. Three systems in one continent, the European continent, that's not acceptable anymore. The governments and the leaders of the world have to sit together. They should not leave the room without agreeing on a minimum standard, minimum procedure, minimum protocol. This is my message to you. Let's work together. Let's make this world a better place. It's in the hands of governments now, unfortunately. 
or fortunately. <laughs> we have here with us so many ministers. I'm looking forward to making a Vora a stepping stone and a place where it sends a clear message to, to the world. The world cannot uh, act alone anymore. This is my message to you. Thank you so much. Again, on behalf of the Resilience Coun Council, a coach, organizer of this meeting, I want to thank everybody. Thank Minister Bartlett for being with us, and Frederick Christian for being with us this morning. Also, the go government of Portugal, a very enlightened government that has offered Evora to us. It's my first time to Evora, not my first time to Portugal, of course. But Evora is a wonderful place, as you can see. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Taleb Rifai. Thank you. And when uh, you uh, uh, are stressing out uh, Portugal, I want to give the stage to my friend and our friends, uh, Luis Arujo, who is president of the ETC, but also president of Visit Portugal, our host country. Luis. Thank you. <coughs> well, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Christian. Um, and thank you, Frederic. It's wonderful to be here. My role here is to welcome you. So welcome to Evora and to Portugal. Um, uh, but I would like to say two more things. Um, first, why are we here? And why is Visit Portugal associated with this event? And the second one is what do we expect as a country, as an organization, as a public organization, uh, but mo mo more important, as a, as, a, as, a, as a citizen that works in traveling for so many years? And, and regarding the first one, why are we here uh, associated with uh, a world for travel? Um, it, it's very simple. Uh, Portugal has a purpose, uh, welcoming everyone and respecting the differences. I would say uh, this is a sustainable purpose and we've even included sustainability at the center of our strategy that was launched in 2017 for the next 10 years until 2027. We have a plan a plan that is being implemented and a plan that is made of goals and actions. We want to have 90% of our companies that work in tourism sustainable with efficiency measures in waste management, water and energy by uh, 2027. And we want 90% of our population satisfied and recognizing tourism as a force for good. But that's the second part. Uh, this is not just about Portugal. This is about a, an entire sector. And this is about the planet. And uh, we cannot, tourism cannot be seen anymore as the victim or the villain of these changes. Uh, so this is the moment and this is the occasion to discuss, to debate, but most important, to define a plan for the future for the entire tourism sector. This is the time to be the driver of this change, to be the actor uh, and to be the driver uh, of this change for the future. So this is why uh, we are here. Um, uh, this is what we expect um, a world for travel will bring to all of us um, because uh, we believe uh, that more than being um, tourism being the industry of peace, we believe it's the industry um, for the planet. So more than ever, we have to recognize that this is a positive industry that has solutions, that has plans, but we have to discuss them openly. And we have to change ourselves also interiorly. We have to be accept diversity and inclusion. We cannot have a sector that has more than 50% of people working in this sector, which are women, and then only 20% occupy C-level positions, we have to recognize that we have to change and we're a micro and very small enterprises businesses. And this has to be changed, not only from above, from the big corporations, but from the entire value chain of tourism. And most important, that we have an extremely positive effect in every country's economy and every pe person's life. So I hope we will have some conclusions and some very open uh, decisions regarding this. Um, but I, I, I would just like to finish saying this is not just the commitment of a country, of an organization. 
It's a matter of attitude and it's a matter of commitment from everyone. So thank you once again. I'm very excited to be here and very hopeful for the future, not only in terms of tourism, and we've seen a stronger light at the end of the tunnel, that's for sure, um, but for a, a much, much better tourism for a much better planet. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Rich, and uh, we are we're all aligned, you see that. So now we are able to have some questions from you. Uh, there is a mic somewhere. I don't see who is providing your mic, unless we can have the first question without the mic. Ah, here, yes, there is a question, yes. The mic? Is there a mic? Sorry. It's coming. It's Harry Potter. <laughs> With this uh, very nice uh, student, you, you see they are dressed in uh, their original coat. So, first question. Thank you. Um, uh, you mentioned that uh, you would like uh, Greta Thunberg not to be the only voice. Um, uh, how do you think the media can do better, and uh, what kind of coverage do you think is lacking, and what we what do we have too much of? Huh, good question. <laughs> no, Greta, Gerber, Greta Thunberg is doing s what she has to do. She's advocating, and she's giving a concern and on sorrow about. The, the state of the planet. And that we, we don't argue, because it's true. Mm. And you need to relay this, of course, all the medias, to push governments, companies, even citizens, and the tourists themselves to move forward. It's a question of education. We have to educate all the stakeholders of this industry. And that's a, the major I think, I, I think, according to me, it's one of the major things we have to do. And you see the fooding industry, they did it. Energy, they are just coming. And even the car manufacturers. So why not tourism and travel industry? We are at a state that we must not rely on the others. So she is a, she, oh, for this perspective, she is right. What is not right is that we cannot avoid humanity and human beings. We are homo sapiens. We want to see, we want to move, we want to travel. That's very crucial. We must really relay on that. We are to travel, we are to discover, we are to have the ability and the freedom to do that. And when we have this freedom, we are no, no more human beings. We are static. And it's not, and, and, and we are not at ease. So I think at, at the same time, we must, to, we must save the planet and the travel industry, and not all the travel industry. And we have to understand this very, very, very deeply. That's my answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can I say something in regards to media? May I? As I said, we have to lower the barriers. Um, we all have issues and we have to address them. Um, but I think our role now is to promote the good examples, to benchmark and to bring to the world what is being done in a good sense in the entire world. There are wonderful exam examples. Uh, and, and once again, um, addressing the role of each person, from a tourist to a DMO. Um, the power of communication today, and Taleb clearly said it, and uh, the, the minister said it too, the power of, communi uh, of communication is so strong that we have to use it as, once again, also a force for good. And I think this is the occasion to do this, promoting the many, many, many ideas that we will see during these two days. Yes. We have other other presentations, so you are able to uh, ask Oliver Wyman uh, about the figures uh, that are moving on about the demand. So maybe uh, for the 
a question about the organization of this tra uh, of this uh, forum can be get right now, and afterwards we are going to move to other questions uh, concerning what's happening now, what's changing, and it, this is certainly very important for all of us. Do you have other? Maybe Daniela, you have questions from? No. Okay. So. I thank you very much for this first uh, this first part of the uh, press conference. Yes, there is a question there. Yes. Uh, hello, Christian Ian Taylor from Travel Weekly in London. Ah, hi. What, hi. what is different about this conference from every other gathering of tourism leaders, the UNWTO, the WTTC, all the others of it. Why is this going to be different? We can talk all day about what needs to happen and what we need to do, but what's going to be different about these two days? The difference is we are a think tank. We are allowed to, not to dream, but we are allowed to go, to go beyond the call for action. We need to uh, s exactly deliver the proper and our deeper feelings. The, and uh, as, as uh, Louis said, we need to give examples. We need to make the people confident in uh, the way of, of, of working. We have to take action, not for one event, but for the, other, the, the next events as well. We are also, also wanted to, have to take action all together, not sector per sector, because more, uh, it's in, we are working with all of, the, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of these organizations, and we want to work with them, and they have a lot of things to do, to, 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 to provide and to share. And there is a place now where all of them can share without uh, any constraint, and we want this to, be, uh, 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 to happen, no constraint. No ideas that was not advocation, but facts, figures, action. And of course, at the end of this uh, of this session of this uh, forum, we are to take over on five action plan action point. These five commitments, what we call this well, Evora spirit commitments, and we have to take action because these these commitments are certainly to be shared with the other organization and with those other stakeholders. So, let's, we can move to the next, uh, yes? Yes, uh, com uh, yes, Taleb. Yes, I want to say something about this meeting. Ian, thank you for being good. This is Portugal. Portugal is a very special country. Portugal is a small country, but small can not only be beautiful. For small can be powerful. Portugal can provide the leadership in there in the region. Evora is, is a start of something big. That's why we're here. That's why we, we're all here. Well, the voice of the tourism industry must be heard very clearly from Portugal, the small country that has so much to offer. Thank you so much.